Hello everyone and welcome to a new lesson of the Magica Voxel Mastering course. Today we're going to talk about the camera and some extra options that you might need to get your renders looking amazing, how to save them and more. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I prepared for you guys this little scene. We have a little Scooby-Doo and Shaggy crying, scared out of this ghost. And I already set up everything for you to use it. The models are separated into three layers and the render is already set up. With the things that we've been discussing so far, it's just an HDRI with some intensity lower down, no sunlight. If you want to download this scene to follow along, feel free to get it on the description of this video. And if you want to get the exact same HDRI that I'm using, it also will be linked in the description of the video so you can have everything. So whenever you click render here on the top left, you will get access to some settings here, uh, the matter panel, the camera panel, and the image panel. So today we're gonna be talking about the camera panel so out of the box, you get a 45 lens and a perspective camera. This basically, as we talked on, on our first video, if you instead use the orthogonal, you will see that all objects look like they're on the same distance. So no matter if they're close or far, they're gonna look the same size. But with a perspective camera, depending on your lens, objects that are further away will appear smaller. That's the difference between orthogonal and perspective. Now. We have, the, we have options here to change a bit our camera. So if you see this length 45 can be changed. So in Magic of Oxel, the smaller this number, the less deformation of perspective you will get on your render. You can go all the way down to one and it will be almost like a orthogonal camera. It's only more uncomfortable to use. Instead, if you use something a bit more than once, you can go like 10 or something like that. You can have something that is almost like orthogonal, but you still get some uh, perspective deformation. And I really like this. Uh, I, I really like to do this. I use this a lot for my renders. So yeah, feel free to to try that for yourself. Otherwise, you can use a very very big lens all the way up to 100. And what that will do is make it so the objects appear very deformed uh, when you get close and you can uh, create these uh, effects, these camera effects. So choose whatever suits you for your render. And moving on on the files, I will stay on the perspective camera. I will go back to the normal lens, which is 45, the default lens, and see what else we have. You see we have the aperture uh, slider here. If we change it, it won't really change our image unless we change this number of the DOF, which stands for depth of field. Basically, this will give you the bokeh effect on your on your scene, uh, which is uh, which refers to these defocus lights looking around or in different shapes. So you can either move this up and down this number of the DOF, or you can just click on an object, and this automatically will focus that voxel on the camera. So if I, if I click on our ghost, in, ghost instead, you will see that the focus will leave Scooby and Shaggy and will focus on the ghost instead. When you move your camera, you will lose automatically your depth of field. It will go back to zero here. So if you don't want that, imagine you want to make a render that just spins around your character like this. In that case, you can click on your object that you want to focus on and then this number will change. Once that number is already set, you can click on the DOF button and then your camera will not correct the depth of field even if you move it. If your object is perfectly centered and it doesn't get further and closer from the camera, this distance will continue to work. Basically, this number is the distance between the voxel and the glass of the camera. Let, imagine this is a real camera in real life. So this will be the distance between the voxel and that glass. If the camera goes further away, then this number now no longer is focusing here because that point of distance is now diff in a different position. You notice that if I go here and I click here, I will have Shaggy in detail. This is locked. And if I start moving away, the, the ghost will become focused and Shaggy and Scooby will become defocused. So that's this button for. Furthermore, if you notice, when I click uh, anywhere to just start defocusing, 
you notice that all this bokeh effect produces rounded defocused lights. If you wanted this to look more of a vintage camera, uh, you can start playing with the blades. The minimum number you can choose for get an effect here is three, because this refers to the edges of the circle, basically the edges of the shape that will be produced by the depth of field. There's no geometric shapes with under three sides. So the minimum you can get is a triangle. If you continue to add, you will notice that they will start getting these other shapes. So depending on how you want this to look, older cameras used to have, used to process images differently. And that's why you get more blades or less blades. If you want to learn more about that, research about camera lenses and, and you will find the depth of field and bokeh effect. Good. So now that we have some blades in here, this rotation button starts making sense. When you move this up and down, all this will do is rotate a bit the effect of the bokeh. You see, it's just if you wanted this to be perfectly straight, you just move it until you find that sweet spot. Otherwise, just leave it at zero and it will be the natural rotation of the effect. Great. Moving on, we also have exposure and vignette. These two effects are post-processing effect. So you notice that most things that you do will restart your render, but this effect won't. If you start changing this, you will see that your render continues to go, but you can still move this up and down and there's not a problem. So this is a post-processing effect. Basically, the exposure will make your image look brighter. It will... Uh, and the vignette will add a darkness. I will make this a bit higher so you can see it. We'll add some darkness from the edges of your image in. It's just an effect that some cameras produce. So you can just play with this to see if that makes your render look good. In some instances, this is very nice to have. It creates a bit of depth on your render. So try it out, see how it works for you. Um, I will just leave it there just to have some. And then we have the ACES button here. Basically, ACES, to understand what this means, you need to go a bit into computer science. So if you're really interested, I will leave a link in the description of this video. It's related to how the zeros and ones that produce an image are encoded to create the pixels that form the image. So it's very, very technical. If you're interested, the link is in the description. It's a 10 minute video that explains it roughly. But if you're interested, there you have it. But let's go to something that is fun and that's the bloom panel. So if you open this, you will notice that you have a play button here. When you click it, you will get a secondary render bar down here because the, the bloom effect is processed separately. So if you notice, I will just remove my aperture for now for a second, just to see this a bit more clearly. And when you start, when you click the bloom, you will notice that this will start creating a glow on anything that is emitting light. So you notice it on our render is only in some parts of this ghost that has an emissive material. I can even maybe add some uh, voxels with emissive material just for you to see how it works. Without it is uh, emitting light, but it's not creating the glow around it. But when you start adding the mix, you'll see that it starts glowing around the material. And it also happens on the HDRI because that's what the high dynamic range image, that's HDRI, uh, is used for. This image has values that go so high that you can emit light from the image. So Magica Voxel is recognizing those, those values and making them glow, basically. The size will basically mean how big is the glow around the object and the aspect will just create star like a star effect uh, depending on the number of blades that you have so if you have five you will look something like this if you have under one you have this horizontal effect so basically the more rays you have you will get different types of stars and the aspect will make basically those rays more or less visible then we have the threshold and this will be used to determine what's the amount of brightness that you need for the glow to be triggered. So the lower it goes, uh, the more things will be included into the mask glow uh, 
status for the program to produce it and the, the higher you go only the lights with the most brightness will glow I generally leave it at zero but if you're doing something very specific then you can just play with this and maybe you have lights with different intensities so this is what you use it for great right now we already have a very pretty looking image so you can see that it's very easy to produce nice good looking images in magical voxel okay so let's explore a bit more what other kinds of cameras we can get we know about the orthogonal camera but let's see what other options we have in the camera panel so we have the sg which stands for stereographic projection if you click it what you will get is a bit more of a lens effect because if you notice the perspective is pretty perfect and if you were using an, a real camera you would get some distortion created by your lens something that i was trying to find online that i couldn't find is that in general when we talk about stereographics and uh, the word stereo means that there's more than one channel so that's why for instance in audio you have stereo and mono audio files this means that you have left and right channels that's stereo or mono files is only one channel and that means that you hear the same thing in both headphones basically right in stereographic imagery what they're talking about is when you record with two cameras to then generate for instance a 3d image that you can watch with the 3d glasses you know that you see depth so that's stereographic imagery so i was trying to find if there's any way to create that i didn't find it so if you know about that let me know in the comments otherwise i'm not really sure why it's called stereographic projection camera it could be something related to computer science that i don't know so let's keep going now we have the panel camera and this will basically create a panoramic projection this means that if you have the right resolution for instance if you have a resolution of two horizontal one vertical for instance 2000 and 1000 you will get a full 360 image that when you rotate you have a seamless connection between the sides so you cannot really see it because it's a bit covered by all these panels but if i went to my render button here the show image settings button i could render this image with the same width by 1000 and i will use only 512 samples i want to render it really quick just to show you i will click render and i will save it on my desktop and now that it's done i will open in photoshop and as you can see now if i go filter other offset this will allow me to just offset the center of this image and you notice that i can just offset it as much as i want and you will never see a line uh, breaking up this image it's a 360 image that you can uh, very well create an, an hdri with or that you can see in vr and you can look around on your phone stuff like that if you know how to put that together so this is the way to, to create those images so going back to our scene this can also be used to create cool effects you can play with this uh, it's a camera that really deforms your characters but you can get things that otherwise you wouldn't and and it's also funny sometimes you can just deform your characters in a funny way or very dramatic you can see if i can i can put my camera kind of here and see the front of both characters even though they are opposed to each other so there are very very cool things you can do with this camera so i invite you to try it out and and play a bit with your with your characters in order to save these renders i'll just go back to my perspective camera now and what I will do is just show you how to save stuff. Once you click on something, this will start. I'll just add some aperture and some bloom and everything. So we have a bit of everything. Something that you will notice is that first you need to wait for your image to be developed as, soon, as much as you want. And then you can save what you're seeing on your screen right now. If you notice, there's a little camera on the bottom left that if you click it, this will basically save a screenshot of what you were seeing on your Magica Voxel IPR, which stands for Interactive Photorealistic Rendering. So I save this as Test Render. And if you go and see that now, you will see that this will keep your glow effects, your blur, everything. Something that is worth mentioning is that this can only go all the way up to 2048. So if you wanted to render something that is bigger than this, unfortunately, you won't be able to do it with the glow effects, with all the things, you will need to use instead the show image settings panel to just adjust the size that you want. This could be really whatever size your computer can render. The bigger, of course, the longer it will take and the bigger the file size will be. So let's save the image now, just 1000 by 1000, just to show you the difference. And let's render it and it will ask you to save it. So I will just call this 
test render 02 it will start processing but notice that we don't have a bloom effect processing right now so we will lose all of that bloom effect so let's see the difference between one and the other and as you can see one of them has all of those glow effects and post processing and the other don't so you can only get them when you click on the little camera if you render you will lose your bloom unfortunately that's the way that the program works maybe on a future version this will be possible or maybe there is a way that i don't know about but there you go something that also is important to understand is that this is the size of your image but this amount of samples that it will take to render it will be determined up here so if you want a super large image super cleaned up you can set it up here and then just put a lot of samples here uh, depending on what you have on your scene more or less samples but the more you have the more it will continue to develop and remove that noise otherwise there is the denoise button that in order to activate it you need to download a plugin for magic of voxel if you're interested in me explaining how to download it and how to use it let me know in the comments and i will make a video on how to do that i will just leave the video here because i don't want this to be too much information i want to keep the video short so let me know in the comments if there's something that i didn't explain properly or that uh, if you have a specific question and see you on the next lesson